You are a bus. You are a bus. Conceive of us Okay, so we're finally going to start installing the new engine bay harness, the new cabin side harness, the PMU, uh, delete the Haltech fuse box, and the CAN bus keypad. We'll be adding that later on, probably. So right now, uh, lots of work to do in order to make that happen. I'm gonna try and do it. Uh, we're gonna both try and uh, work through all the things that need doing as quickly as we can because, again, this is my daily driver and, you know, as long as we're working on it and it's here, I don't have any way to commute. Intake manifold is gonna be coming out, top mount intercooler, I'll remove the old harness, plug in the new harness, we'll make sure, you know, all the lengths are correct, everything reaches where it's supposed to reach. That's to do with the engine bay. Now inside the car, I'll need to I'll need to remove like the cluster. I'll need to remove some some of the trim in order to reach certain wires and uh, certain things that need tapping into or need removing. Haltech fuse box is going to be deleted. Uh, we're going to remove the old cabin side harness. So lots and lots of work to do. So there's nothing left but to get to work. This is a good reminder to take my watch off. Right. So now that the cooler's out of the way, um, we'll remove the intake manifold. So I think it's just a lot of 10 mils. Lots and lots of 10 mils. Let's start disconnecting stuff. Drive by wire. Off you go. Right, two coils, two injectors, out. There's the crank sensor and there's the oil pressure sensor as well. Uh, fuel pressure sensor down here. So, What's left now is the engine ground. And I think we can, uh, we can get this harness out. Hooray. And then under, yeah. Okay. I must say, it's not that bad in here. Not too bad at all. I can't remember which side goes out first. Yeah, this one. Um, okay, so this is where this is where we're at right now. Um, so the new harness. Uh, let's see if we can see it. Can you see it over there? It's right over there. Over there. Okay, new harness is in. A uh, few connectors already connected. Uh, the PMU is temporarily it's temporarily mounted. It will. This will be its final location. Uh, it's just temporarily held in with zip ties at the moment. But uh, you get an idea. It'll be uh, hidden under the dashboard nicely. The harness uh, uh, wraps around the, the heater core units, whatever you want to call it, and uh, uh, goes to the other side. So anyway, uh, now that everything is in, um, your thumb is now going to take over and, you know, splice whatever needs splicing and connect whenever needs connecting. And uh, hopefully then we can start the car. So your time is doing some stuff and I'm just filming him doing some stuff. Okay, um, I'll just show you where we're at at the moment. Uh, so here we have, let's just make sure that you can see everything. Um, so we have the, the power feed wires uh, coming from the grommet here and goes all the way uh, over there. 
Okay, held in with the zip ties. And now uh, the fender liner can go back in and uh, the wheel can, sorry, the, the car can go back on the ground. So here we have the wires going. Uh, these are for the fans, these are for the lights, horn, uh, etc. That means that we're getting one step closer to getting rid of this entire fuse box. So, you know, step by step, we'll start replacing things, getting rid of things, deleting things, and we'll make more and more progress, and we'll get rid of the whole thing altogether. Uh, so that's where we're at at the moment with the fuse box. Um, over here, like I said, we have the main trunk of the harness. We have the uh, power feed going from the alternator to the starter motor. And from the starter motor, there's another power feed going into the car and in, uh, onto the PMU. Let's see if we can see that over here. Okay, so uh, as you can see, we have the feed line the power feed to the PMU that gives uh, that supplies power to the PMU that goes from the starter motor we have the two uh, connectors here um, that you just saw going uh, behind the fender liner uh, underneath the fender these go to the front of the car to the fuse box and uh, you can see over here uh, the accelerator pedal from the accelerator pedal this connector goes to that Deutsch connector which goes to the main trunk of the harness, uh, to the bulkhead connector. Somewhere up there. So uh, a lot of things, a lot of things, uh, more and more things connected. More and more things connected. What's going on here? So making progress, connecting more and more things. Uh, we're gonna carry on. I'll now refit all the rear seat. I'll put the fender liner back in, put the wheel on, drop the car back on the ground, and uh, then we can move on to your time, we'll carry on. Uh, the wiring here in the fuse box. And I think we might be able to power everything on and start uh, configuring everything in the software, the PMU that needs to run the fuel pump and the fans and, and all, that, uh, all that fun stuff. So uh, let's continue with the work, still lots of work to do. And I wanna get this car up and running today. So um, the engine bay harness is in, cabin side harness is in, the uh, PMU adapter is in, PMU is connected, it's now receiving power. And so now we need to start configuring everything in the software. So uh, your time, walk us through what you're going to do and why. So first of all, we have constant power, battery power to the PMU. So now we can open the PMU software. Now you can see PMU is currently on, but the ECU, the Haltec ECU is not on. Uh, because we didn't enable the pins that uh, support, supply power to it. So right now the PMU is receiving power, but the ECU isn't because you haven't yet configured the ECU to receive power from the PMU. Yeah, so the PMU will send power to two circuits. One will include the ECU and also the ignition outputs, but there is another circuit that includes the injectors. So before we could start configuring anything, we have to configure those two to be active when the PMU is on. So mm -hmm. we'll start by uh, looking at the documentation, ignition that also connected to the ECU A13, A and the injection uh, also is connected to A26. So now we will configure that output. The first output will be output ignition Power. For now, we'll use the default on off. We saw that it was on all 12, and then we will define it for now max current of uh, 15 amps. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that will be our ignition power. That will wake up the ECU. Mm -hmm. We can see that we have some kind of power consumption, but we can see that the ECU is uh, also operating. Mm -hmm. So now, now we have to configure something important that means the fuel pump. Mm -hmm. Fuel pump output by our documentation is at 015. So uh, now we'll test that output that is going to work. Uh, we can do it by pressing reset control plus F12. Uh, you can see that both of the functions are on and also the fuel pump is active 60, 60%. So now that we have the basic functions 
of the car we can also start it if we want mm -hmm. and see that the car is running and uh, the all the installation are correct so uh, maybe you can do the down start the car oh thank you yeah so uh i don't know if the microphone picks it up but the fuel pump is priming and uh, now we can uh, try start the car for the first time with the new harness and see if everything works. Yes, it does. Yep, it does. It <laughs> okay, does. okay. That's, yep. uh, that's, so now, that's a relief. Yeah, so you can see also while the car is running, we can see that the fuel pump is currently uh, around the 18 uh, amps yeah. of consumption and we can see that the ignition coils uh, injectors are not, not, a no, no, yeah. not a very high consumption no not a very high consumption yeah so uh, turn on turn off the car okay so we've complete the basic configuration of the PMU um, ECU is receiving power the car starts everything seems to be working fans are now so configured so that's like the basic config the basic configuration for the car to start uh, working running driving so i'm really excited about that now we're moving on to uh, the really exciting stuff and that is the canvas keypad yeah it's a, a device we have purchased from uh, issue master to suit the pmu mm -hmm. it doesn't talk with haltech oh it doesn't talk with Haltech because the Haltech doesn't enable anything that it's not uh, suited from his canvas profile. Uh, okay. So, but it's on the same bus, so the data that transfers could be sent also. Uh, so this actually communicates with the PMU and through the PMU, it communicates with the Haltech ECU. So that's a that's a hack that we are going to do. Uh -huh. That's a hack. We can read from it. But to send to send data to Haltech, we have to uh, communicate and talk with Haltech language. Mm -hmm. And that keypad is not uh, talking with Haltech language. It's talking with, let's say, from uh, another uh, open network communication. So, uh, do the honor, connect it. Yes, please. Yeah. Yes, please, indeed. So, so this will go in. Oh, it's making lights. Yeah, it's making lights. Oh, it's, oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, it is. That's beautiful. So the Let's Altec... It's right over here. Yeah, that's that's the uh, goal that we're going to use. I'm going to take a picture right now. <laughs> nice. <laughs> While you're taking a picture, yeah. I'll do a configuration of a can keypad. Okay? Mm -hmm. So it's an ECU Master 6 by... Yeah. This six by two connected on CAN two. Let's do just a quick configuration of let's say if the fuel pump is going to receive power, yeah, we will see it on the indicator of this. We'll call it fuel pump indicator. Indicator, yeah, why not? Uh, can we make it red? We will make it red for you. Yay! Yeah, so. Uh, we will also do another thing for it. It will be an indicator. Let's say, okay, so you can see the the, uh, yeah. the colors that we can choose. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So the channel will be, we already have a function for it, okay? So fuel pump enable is that mm -hmm. function. And then... So when it does the priming? Yeah, so let's force priming of the Haltech. You can see that the indicator is working. We can see the fuel pump is uh, also operating. This is a really, really cool part. I'm, I'm really happy with this. And uh, really, you know, um, the world's, the world is at your fingertips with this thing, and I'm, uh, I'm very happy about it. So, it looks like uh, we're going to be wrapping it up here. And uh, as you can see. Lots of exciting stuff. Okay, so that is all for this episode. We barely touched the surface with everything that the keypad is capable of. Really, uh, the, the, the endless options with the keypad, you know, things like uh, doing different boost maps, rolling anti-lag, the AC will be activated from there. So still, again, we skipped over a lot of things that we filmed, like the radiator fans. Your time demonstrated how you can configure a button to be an indicator light and like a test button to activate the fans at both speeds, high, low. So it, it felt it felt that it was a bit of a nerd out overload on uh, on the canvas communications and uh, and keypads and wiring and all that. So so I decided uh, um, to leave most of it out. 
But um, if, if you're interested to, to see more about the functionality of the keypad and all the endless options that it offers, so let me know in the comments and, and we'll put a video together, you know, dedicated to the keypad and the PMU and its functionality and how it communicates with the Haltech and all the options that it has and all that kind of stuff. So the wiring that we have left is basically just deleting the fuse box and doing the front harness and a few sensors that we still haven't uh, gotten to yet that need wiring in, but basically we're almost done with the wiring. At this point, I feel like I want to take a break from wiring, see to some mechanical issues, and then uh, we'll complete the jobs that are left. If it's things like uh, rebuilding the gearbox, again, there's some handling modifications. I want to redo the power steering lines. I want to do something custom of my own. What else? I'm looking for a replacement for the teal bluff valve. I love it, but it's too big. I need to find something small to go here. I was thinking of the, of the forge bluff valve that I had and sold. I'll need to get a different one and uh, have it powder coated black. Or if you have any recommendations for a blow off valve that sounds good and it has a smaller profile that we'll be able to hit here without interfering with the intake manifold, please let me know. What else do we need to do? I want to I want to redo the rocket covers. I bought all the new uh, bolts and washers and and gaskets and everything. So. Um, I would like to re redo those, reseal them. I have adjustable cam gears I would like to install. There's the PRS quick steering rack, which I think I've owned for like eight months now and it's just been sitting at home. I haven't had time to uh, get to that, but I wanna do that with the, with the custom lines that I'm, I'm making for the power steering system. So like I said, lots of stuff, not a lot of time. I, I, need, I need to, you know, I need to prioritize, see what's, uh, what's most urgent and see to that first. I think next episode will probably be the gearbox rebuild because that's that's pretty urgent uh, my gearbox is in very bad shape i don't feel comfortable driving it on the track or even doing like uh, roll races on the street with uh, random people so i think i'll be seeing to that first and then we'll move on to other things that need seeing to so as always there's still lots more to come and um, that is it for this episode so thank you very much for watching until next time see you in the next one